Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I present the X-15 which I modeled for Kerbal Space Program finally. After a long time having it in my plans I already made the B-52 for it and here I am putting it together. Now it doesn't come with the engine because Realism Overhaul already has a version of the engine for it though I may create a custom engine for it down the road. Uh, but here I've got the ventral fin that decouples but I didn't have a node right at this point I fixed that already. And yeah, we just sort of put that on and rotated it because basically the node was rotated wrong. And I don't have the external tanks for the X-15 which you could carry, but the engine is the XLR-99, which looks like that in Realism Overhaul. I think I will make a custom model for it. And yeah, so that's basically it. Though I should have turned the... Uh, the horizontal stabilizers down. I forget if I actually did that or not. It doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of difference in Kerbal, I think. Uh, but obviously for looks, the horizontal stabilizers are tilted down in the real one. But I might have forgotten that. Anyway, here it is on the B-52 with a normal decoupler. I don't have the pylon between the B-52 and X-15 for the release version when I get to releasing it. Uh, it will have that. The B-52 had trouble handling and veered off to the right. I had to use wheel steering, A and D, in order to sort of stop it from going off to the right until we got enough air across the big vertical stabilizer. You can see me using the rudder there. Uh, once we have enough air across the vertical stabilizer, it's better. Uh, I'm using adjustable landing gear for both the landing gear on the B-52 as well as the X-15. Oh, but I rotated a little bit too much. And so explosions. Well, yep, gotta be careful with that. So I just relaunched it, and this time I went with a side view, of course, uh, in order to avoid a tail strike. And we make a lot of use of the little wheels on the wingtips. You can see that we keep getting the wheels being overstressed. That's an issue, but after a brief hop, we managed to bring this up. Takeoff speeds in Kerbal Space Program are always higher than in real life because the airfoils are basically assumed to be like F-104 airfoils or fighter jet or uh, you know those kinds of airfoils which are very thin and don't get as much lift. So we tried separating off the X-15. That part worked, although of course we have the decoupler hanging on with it and lining the engine, but we were too nose heavy. I forgot to check at this point. This was all during live stream, and I forgot to check at this point you know, where the center mass and center lift were, and the center mass was too far forward. So we are lawn darting, uh, but we do have the opportunity to check a few things, like the control surfaces. I actually checked the control surfaces beforehand on the runway. I just brought them out, and uh, so I sort of knew that they moved, but now we saw that they could work to control it. I separated off the ventral fin properly, so that went off and the skids are out, but we are not going to be able to land. We are pulling the nose up, we just don't have enough room. I mean, eventually I would be able to pull the nose up, but uh, yeah, just not enough uh, air for that. So that's what the center mass and center lift looked like in the SPH, and as the fuel drains, it moves back because of the weight of the engine in the tail, that's normal, and also the tail surfaces. And so I used a little fuel tank to adjust the location of the center mass in the configuration file. And after I moved it, we tried to take off from my version of Edwards Air Force Base, which is where we should have been taking off in the first place instead of Cape Canaveral. A little bit wobbly, again, with the B-52 at first, but we managed to get up to speed and take off. It's fuzzy on the ground textures on the runway because basically there's very few textures covering all of Edwards Air Force Base or it'll take a lot of space and I didn't want to take up a lot of space with Edwards Air Force Base in my install though. These days, with, uh, since I have the 64 gigabytes of RAM, I could probably do a much better job. Anyway, we are off with the X-15 and now it's better balanced. Unfortunately, the engine plume is off. Again, I didn't make the engine. I will consider making an engine that has the plume in the right place. Maybe a nicer, louder plume or something. And we still have the decoupler on it because I haven't made the pylon. And so here we are with the RCS helping out, the RCS being uh, hydrogen peroxide RCS. And at this point, the fuel that we have only burned for 70 seconds, it's supposed to be 80 seconds. I adjusted that in the configuration file, but hadn't reloaded it. 
So yeah, it's actually supposed to have a little bit more fuel, but just with what it has, it got to 92 kilometers on this run. And we unfortunately ended up crossing the coast and uh, we are not gonna be able to get back to Edwards like this. Uh, we'll get a better release point with the B-52 on the next flight so that we can get back to Edwards, but didn't really think about that. The empty weight seems to be about right, uh, based on what Wikipedia says for it. And so, yeah, it in theory is performing properly. We've got the right engine, right engine stats, right dry mass, uh, less fuel than it should have though. Here I'm pulling up. This is what I would regard as a good pull up. You can see the G-forces though. We'll see an example of a bad pull up and why the X-15 had a limit to how high it could go on these suborbital flights in a bit. But anyway, we are pulling some G-forces there and basically I was aiming for a landing in the general vicinity of Vandenberg Air Force Base, but we did not get to Van... I mean, there's no Vandenberg Air Force Base to get to here, but uh, here we go. All the stuff out, the ventral fin off, and touching down. So, yep. We were not supposed to go to Vandenberg, but that is where we sort of kind of ended up. Here I'm just uh, sort of gliding above the surface, trying to see where the stall speed is. I'm looking intently at the pitch authority and seeing when we use too much of it. And basically, as soon as I think we are reaching a limit, I, I set it down. And so here we're descending. I, I usually only want to use about 50% of the pitch. So here we're trying to get down. Speeds, sort of reasonable in the for an X-15 touchdown, sort of the right area. We might have had a drag shoot, and but, but we don't. I mean, we should have added that. Also, there are split brakes on the vertical stabilizer. I've animated them, they are an animation, but they don't do anything practically yet right now. So yeah. This time, I picked it up from a quick save that I made after flying the B-52 up to altitude and took the B-52 all the way to the coast and then started turning around so that it's pointing at Edwards Air Force Base when we release the X-15. That way we can make it back, of course. So we release the X-15 again, and off we go. There isn't too much of a point to yank the X-15 up dramatically initially because it has to get through the transonic region and you don't want to uh, deviate from the prograde vector while doing that. Once it's above Mach 1.3, it's better in terms of climbing. I don't necessarily think the RCS was necessary, but it's probably beneficial. The control surfaces should have been enough. Okay, so here we are coasting up after the engine is done, and you can see 115 kilometers. So we're overperforming a little bit, and I'm not entirely sure why. But, yeah, I mean, considering we actually still have less fuel than we ought to. Again, 70 seconds versus 80 seconds. And the dry mass is correct, so I'm not too sure about the overperformance as far as height is concerned, but... They might have wanted to limit the height anyway, because on the way back down, it's pretty rough uh, if you try to get to this height. It's better to go faster horizontally and come back down uh, a little bit safer instead of trying to spike up to a high height and come back down like this. And so you will see that the G-forces are dramatic and it's having trouble control it because even with the really large vertical stabilizer. First of all, FAR doesn't really understand the wedge stabilizer thing. Uh, it knows the two-dimensional uh, sort of uh, shape of the vertical stabilizer, but not the three-dimensional shape. So, yeah. That was a little bit rough. You saw the G-forces go up to 15 or something. So, that might be one reason why they didn't try to fly the X-15 much higher. And here we do see Edwards over there, so I'm trying to turn towards it. And we will see if we can land at it. As it turns out, we had a lot more energy than I thought we did. It glides pretty well, but I aimed for the salt flats instead of trying to aim for the runway because I thought it would land short. As it turns out, it's not going to land short at all. 
all the wing surfaces have the normal FAR module with their dimensions correctly assessed, so I made sure to measure them exactly in Blender, and we got the correct measurements for FAR to work off of. So it shouldn't have any extra gliding than it ought to have, and the body doesn't have any body lift at all. Maybe I could add more drag to the body, but I don't see a point. It is a very pointy body, so it's, I don't think it's supposed to have more drag. The only thing that would have more drag is the tail fin. That probably ought to have more drag than it has right now. Again, because of the wedge. I think they said that the back end of the tail with the wedge shape actually create more drag than some other airplanes, the entire airframe. So, yeah, that's quite remarkable. So I had tried to aim for a runway, but I can never see the markings on the saw flats in time. I eventually see them, but it's sort of a hopeless case to try and line up with them. And so we end up over here, way further than I thought we would get to. Again, same idea, just sort of gliding at low altitude until I think we're getting too close to stalling. And then sit down, and hopefully this time we can stay stable on the skids. And yeah, I'm just being very cautious not to actually try to control it at all. Basically, I'm making sure that I don't turn left or right at all. And yeah, that sort of worked. So, it sort of came to a stop. The way I made the Edward scenery, it's basically one big collider, and it clips into the ground. So that's why it has this sloping bit at the end, so that I can clip into the regular Kerbal ground, you see. It's basically a huge mesa. But anyway, it's very simple, but simplicity allows for good performance when you're doing something like this. Anyway, so we landed it, just not in a very good location. Next up, I decided to try to eliminate the decoupler issue by making the X-15 the root part, but I didn't do that right. And as a result, when we actually went to decouple it, um, the decoupler sort of went off, but the plane didn't. So, yeah, I'll just make a custom pylon, it's better that way. We couldn't get rid of it. And so I decided finally to land the B-52 for once, just for the heck of it. So far we've been letting the B-52 crash out of sight, of course, as we focused on the X-15. And so this time we bring it down, but there's a quirk with the B-52's engines. First of all, they don't make any sound, apparently. And second of all, they... Under 50% throttle, they slow down dramatically, so basically you don't want to go below 50% throttle until you're really sure. It's basically like having air brakes out uh, below 50% throttle. I don't understand that either, so it's a little bit bizarre. And we had some weird landing gear sounds, but anyway, we managed to land safely with B-52 though. Uh, yeah, some quirkiness there with it going on to its rear and everything, but you know, there's Kerbal. So, I'll continue working on the X-15, but so far, much more success than I thought I would have on the initial testing. And we will see how it goes in the future as I add a new engine part, pylon, and the external tanks. And then I'll release it as part of my plane pack. So, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.